Morning, everybody. In this episode of Tales from the Hoodie, I'm wearing my Harvard University sweatshirt. So you probably ask yourself, oh, you went to Harvard. Well, this video is more about the education of Uncle Craig than it is Harvard. I did go to Harvard uh, for a visit. <laughs> That's where I got the sweatshirt. I don't think I probably would have been accepted in Harvard. You know, it's all about uh, a lot of other criteria. You know, I was not in that, uh, not in that group, I guess. Although I did uh, join, I made an application. That's why I really, I have the hoodie, and you know, I, I think I like the hoodie. Uh, I was a educator for my career and uh, later an administrator and one year I forget what year it was I you know I was looking for professional development and I wanted good professional development and so I went online to Harvard University you know I think Penn State and some others or something and I saw that Harvard University had something called the Principal Center and I thought oh that was good and it was kind of like this think tank of principals that got together and I guess talked about education and where it would go and things like that and uh, how to educate and promote your teachers and things like that and so um, I made an application to be a member of the Principal Center at Harvard University and I got a letter in the mail, you know, official Harvard letterhead and all that, saying that I was accepted uh, as a member of the Principal Center. And I thought, oh my gosh, I was, it made me feel so good. You know, I, I really did. Because education played a key role in my life, not just my education. But, um, but it, it made me feel good. I felt like, uh, wow, man, very, very cool. I, I was going to be with like-minded people, and uh, anyway, so then you, uh, you flew out to Boston. I was actually out on the islands at the time, and uh, for a few days, you you know were basically in these think tank kind of workshops where people, professors from Harvard, would would talk to you and stuff. And of course, you know they'd walk you around the campus, go to come to some of the famous places. Um, like where you rub the guy's boot or something on the statue, I forget what that was, in the Harvard Yard. And um, you went into this uh, prestigious Harvard faculty lounge, you know, where the halls were donned with portraits of those who came before you and all the other stuff, you know, all this prestige, you know. But, and I, you know, I, I just was really felt good about that. Later, I don't think they have the principal center anymore. Later I would understand that, you know, in years past or whatever, I would understand that all it really was was another aspect to Harvard and schools like that uh, in which they generate revenue. Because it was, you know, expensive. But you can pretty much, anybody can go to Harvard. As long as you pay the money not really for your bachelor's degree but I'm pretty sure you can get all kinds of graduate certificates and professional certificates and maybe even your actual graduate degree uh, easy enough just pay the money and more and more universities are doing that they have these different kinds of workshop groups or different kinds of groups that they'll call different names like principal center uh, to get you in there and, and, and get that money. Uh, but for me, it just felt good. It almost felt like, uh, <laughs> you know, the, the first time I, first time I got my American Express Platinum card, <laughs> to me that was like a milestone. I think I had to write back to American Express thanking them because the card had always been elusive, you know. I never had good credit, of course I do now, but. 
But education, you know, it gave me a, it was a grounding source in my life. You know, I have uh, five, there's five children in my family. Two, I have two older brothers and older sister, and younger sister. And uh, none of us graduated high school proper. I mean, I did. Uh, I think one of my brothers has a GED now. But, uh, you know, it was, it was just not in the neighborhood, I guess, you know. Uh, fortunately, I was able to, you know, continue my education when I um, really didn't want to in high school. And um, I was able to do evening high school uh, for more credits so that I could actually graduate and get my diploma. So I graduated high school, but then, you know, I didn't really like school. So I pissed off for almost seven years, you know, on the beach, in Huntington Beach. And, um, you know, then I had this... I don't know if I mentioned it in another video, but I had an accident where a guy hit me. And uh, at the time, my roommate was like, dude, we should go to college. And I, you know, I, that was laughable to me. I go, dude, dude, you didn't even know what high school was, man. It was horrible. And um, he said, well, let's just take, uh, we'll take one class in the summer. We'll take a class in the summer. You know, if we like it, you know, we'll hang out. All right, so we both went. We took English 101, which is really just a composition class. And basically it was me and him and about 30 girls in that class. And I thought, whoa, this is college? Dude, sign me up. Um, but it was pretty cool. I mean, we, we wrote every day, typical journal kind of class where you had to write for 30 minutes or something without saying nothing. And then you talked about what you wrote about. You know, it was a little bit cathartic for me. I could write out a lot of different stories and stuff growing up. Um, but I really liked it. And uh, so I signed up for the fall semester at Orange Coast College, which was a junior college in Orange County, Costa Mesa. And uh, signed up for you know a full load of classes, and it was pretty cool. I had to pay my own tuition, and um, I didn't know anything about financial aid, but you know. So then I uh, I went to I, signed, I picked my major at that time. Mostly in junior college, you're going to go through general education anyway. That's where you get all your history and science and math and all that stuff done again, and you go on you do kind of pick an emphasis mine was sports medicine um, so I went through the two years of that and then um, I transferred to Cal State Long Beach where I finished my bachelor's degree and continued for my teaching credential uh, I actually even continued for a master's in physical education athletic training um, but I didn't finish it because I left overseas, mess around, and then actually start working overseas. But then I also returned for my master's from Cal State Northridge, uh, my master's in educational administration and policy studies. But for me, you know, education was the was the savior. You know, I would have, in my neighborhood, it was dead or in prison eventually kind of thing, you know, as far as I was concerned. But little milestones in educational achievements, you know, being able to graduate with my degree and being able to graduate with my credential and being able to get my master's and go to Harvard for whatever reason. Um, they gave me a sense of accomplishment because I was, I was doing it all alone. You know, on my own. Um, unfortunately, I had to take advantage of student loans, about seventeen thousand five hundred dollars of which was paid back by the government because eh, I was working in uh, uh, impoverished uh, schools. You can get that done. You can still do that, I believe. Might even be a little more now. 
but it was uh, a great opportunity for me um, and it gave me like I said that sense of accomplishment and a little bit of a balance I think during your life you need to feel accomplished I guess not, not successful because <laughs> I don't consider myself self successful but I do consider myself accomplished because I was able to do certain things and uh, and I enjoyed them my uh, my masters in uh, educational administration and policy studies from Northridge Cal State Northridge I found out something I did that actually online like many schools um, although Cal State Northridge had a great program too I mean you can you can probably now and even my perspective on that is different too because now you know you can um, pretty much get a master's in a cracker box I think but uh, I was determined <clears throat> during that time to you know to get good grades break you know bust my act to be able to do it right and all that stuff uh, because it wasn't one of these, you know, cracker box universities. It was Cal State uh, Northridge, and um, so I tried, and I, and I, you know, I researched so much, I did so much, and grinded it out, and grinded it out, and I wound up getting straight A's. You know, I graduated with a 4.0, and um, or no. I graduated, that's right, I think I graduated with like a 3.9. Because in one of my last classes, you know, I was, it was for the final or something like that. Um, you know, I had documents and stuff that I studied, 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 studied. And um, I got an A on every single thing I ever did in that program. And then the last one I got, I don't even know what it was, I think it was like a fucking C, excuse my language. <clears throat> and I was like, what? That's impossible. So I went back meticulously, and I mean, I had my whole living room was spread out with with every chapter of papers and all this other stuff. And I figured out that what happened was that the teacher asked questions that were not in the chapters assigned to that test, like the chapter, the, you know, the. The exam cover chapters 24 through whatever, 29 or something like that. And, uh, and you could ask me anything about that, I would know the answer. And I found out that his, there was uh, five or six questions that were from like chapter 23 or something like that. Because I scoured the whole textbook looking for where he got these answers. And then I figured out what he probably did. Because I, I looked at his background, I went, you know, drilled it down. He was also principal of a secondary school at the same time that he was uh, teaching this class. So to me, what he probably did was he had a, uh, a question bank where he had all these exams, you know, and he had questions and stuff. And then it was a general topic that he was there, so he wound up pulling these questions, making this exam without really thinking too much about it because I couldn't believe that he would intentionally try and throw a wrench into everybody's studies. So I found out that his questions were from this other chapter. And so I wrote to him, I think, and he didn't say anything, so I wrote directly to the department chair and said, this is what happened. And he's all, oh, shoot, Craig, I'm sorry, like, like this. And then the grade was changed uh, to an A. Uh, well, to an A minus. <laughs> yeah, an A minus, because I guess he had to have the last, you know, word. But I was like, you, <laughs> Anyway, uh, I did get it done, and I went to the campus uh, for graduation, cap and gown, all that stuff. And then uh, the people who graduated, like Sigma Cum Laude and top of the class and stuff, were up there. And I, and I saw in the in the flyer, you know, in the program, that these people that were graduating, you know, with with honors. I mean, I graduated with honors technically, and they gave you the honors medallion or whatever but they had like a 3.7 or 
Phillips 9 or whatever uh, GPA. And I thought, wait a minute, my GPA is like 3.9. Why am I not the, the highest GPA or, you know, sigma cum laude or whatever? And, uh, and, I, and, I, and that puzzled me. So I drilled down in the, in the school handbook. I kind of like that, you know. And, uh, and I found out that people that took courses online for degrees or whatever, in order for you to, in order for your GPA to be in the running, so to speak, for Sigma Cum Laude and all that, you had to have, I don't know what it was, I, I think it was like six units or at least four units or something of credit uh, on the campus, which I could have done. I could have came home in the summer and took summer classes on campus. Had I known that, I probably would. I probably would have. Just so, again, I was going to feel accomplished, like I, you know, I graduated at the top of the class or whatever. You know. I graduated at the top of the class, you know, as far as our, you know, online classes were. And there's some really cool people in my cohort. Um, but I was like, man, man. Although now, like many of the rich guys that don't have degrees that everybody else maybe would tell you, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't all that was cracked up to be. Education, I think, isn't for everybody but I think that everybody should be educated if that's a if that's okay to say <laughs> you know in some in some way shape or form I think education does provide you with stability it doesn't always uh, provide you with ability meaning your ability to do things right and to do make good decisions and stuff like that. But it does provide stability. You know, it gave me a place to go, stay out of trouble, a um, sense of accomplishment. I did meet a lot of people. My friend who I went to junior college with, we went through the two years. He, he actually did the same thing, athletic training, I believe, and uh, or sports medicine at the time. Um, but after two years, we went to, when we transferred to Long Beach, he was only in there in like the beginning of that first semester. And then he just figured it wasn't for him. So he stopped going to college. Uh, and that was because he was given a better opportunity at his place of work. He was given a management opportunity at a place of work, which was, you know, a big chunk of change more, right? So he decided to, you know, stop going to college. So he got his associate's degree, uh, but he never got his bachelor's degree. But he went on to becoming, you know, a great management, regional management, and like, I don't know, he's probably vice president or something now. Um, and, then, and then, you know, I could say that's an example of how it worked for him. For me, I needed education. I needed it in my life, and I still like it. I still like learning stuff. You know, I still like taking classes and digging it all up and finding out what's going on and stuff like that. Mostly because I think I have an answer for everything. <laughs> but now that I'm retired and I've had a whole year or a whole career behind me basically would I do everything the same probably I definitely would go to college I probably would go to college earlier you know those seven years after high school of pissing around um, eh, probably set me back a little bit most of the people I was in college with were younger than me um, I did take, uh, I didn't take my time, but I did, I always took more classes, like full-time college, if you remember, if you don't know, it's 12 units. 
four classes usually, three units each at the undergraduate level. But I would always take at least 16, if not 18, and then even in one semester, 21, which I'd have permission for. Because I was just, you know, I was all in, man. I was all in, trying to take advantage of what I was being uh, given, which was an opportunity to, you know, learn more. I didn't learn anything in high school, that's for sure. Because they weren't teaching you anything now, then. And now I guess they're not teaching anything either. <laughs> Taking it all away. So, it was great. It was great. And the Harvard hoodie is it's also a quality hoodie by Champion Sportswear. And, uh, yeah, it makes me feel comfortable. My cat seems to like it too. One of my cats, but he's constantly climbing on me when I'm doing these videos. Well, I think that's enough about my Harvard hoodie and this tale. Tales of the education of Uncle Craig. I got through it. And that's it. One of the questions I often got asked was, do I have my PhD or did I go to the doctorate level? And the answer was no. I don't have it. Um, I tried a couple of times. I did apply for a couple of programs. They didn't accept me. Um, probably wasn't the right demographic. Although I did, matter of fact, <clears throat> no, that's right. I did get accepted because I tried a PhD earlier on after I got my master's and stuff. I figured that was advantageous to go right after, kind of, but it wasn't. Uh, although when I returned to America in 2013. Uh, as an administrator, had an administrative contract up in Northern California in Hayward. I applied for the PhD program at uh, what was it called? Um, California Cal, Cal State East Bay, I think it was. Uh, the East Bay, which was on the other side of San Francisco, right? And the eastern side of the, the river. I think it was Cal State East Bay. I don't remember. <laughs> but I do remember that they accepted me uh, in the program. But before that semester, and so in the fall, they, I would have started. But um, in the, in, after the spring, my contract would have ended in, or did end in July. Um, and my position was eliminated. Yeah. So I basically didn't have a job. And if I didn't have a job up there, uh, I didn't see how I could just stay up there and go to college because, you know, I needed a job. And um, that school district was the school district. So I, mean, I probably could have pushed and found some other job up there. Maybe they would have gave me a teaching job or something like that. I don't know. But um, anyway, so I wound up actually, I think that, yeah, that's when I decided, you know, I would, uh, I would just kind of maybe try and retire. And my wife was still on Saipan at the time, so I flew back to Saipan. She had a, a retail store there, um, Hip Hop Islands. And so we wound up selling the store, packing it all up. Uh, and in the August of 2013, we flew back to this America, um, bought a house, and tried to live there, which we did for you know the eight years before we came here. Although I did um, wind up finding uh, a couple more contracts during that time, I did get a local job uh, initially as a substitute. Uh, later to be in a full-time position. But I took a contract overseas in the Bahamas during that time, and I took another contract overseas in Bahrain, in the Middle East, during that time. And so, uh, yeah. But it put a wrench in trying to get my PhD. And again, getting the PhD was more about me feeling accomplished than it was about trying to uh, 
you know, get it for my resume or whatever. Although I did always, in those years from my Harvard, I did always put, you know, when it when like on your one page resume, and you know, have that section of skills and activities that you want to have at the bottom, or kind of like what your hobbies are, or this or that, or whatever. I'd always, I'd always put, you know, member, you know, association of the school principals like that, member, principal center at Harvard University, and. and uh, that was always something I always typed in there, and, and there were a few people, a few you know, interview people who asked me about that, and I was happy to explain it to them. And but looking back now, it's in today's educational environment, you know, just make sure you get that one-page resume and you list your education and your jobs. It's pretty basic because there's so many people it's going to be very competitive. When I went back to California and uh, was looking for my next administrative job in California, um, I remember, you know, in California you have to go online and you have to apply online to these schools from an a, a educational database that they created for the state or whatever. And uh, you all apply through there. Unless you go to private school, you might be able to go from their website. But you know, um, and I probably had four or five hundred applications online submitted over the years, the few years that I was there. And that's because for for every administrative position, there are hundreds of applicants. Um, smaller schools, they s still probably dozens and dozens of applicants. Oh, I thought that stopped recording. <laughs> um, and it's competitive. So I wound up being able to, you know, I, I pretty much got most of the job offers that I applied to. Some of them I would try and negotiate and, and I didn't take them or whatever. Uh, because you learned, I think, from that application, you learned what they were looking at. I did so many applications and I would get these kind of emails back, kind of like cookie cutter emails back if I, you know, if I wasn't selected. And I could begin to see what it was that you needed to write down on your application in order to make sure that you got an interview. Uh, administrators, you would get an interview and from that and they would interview maybe six or seven principals and then from that group they would pick two or three to go to the secondary executive level interview and then they would pick one. I was always in the executive level but I never you know I didn't always get the position so but I'm just glad I don't have to do any of that anymore. No. And today's, it, I probably wouldn't really want to anymore because it's just so convoluted, I believe, in those circles. In the educational environment internationally, which really was my whole career until I went back to the States in 2013, it still was because of the Bahamas and Bahrain, but the international circuit is entirely different. I definitely would advocate for people to go into international teaching and just travel the world and go to different schools and do a good job and even go as an administrator, travel the world as an administrator, do a good job and move on and have a great, great life, you know, but make sure you have a retirement program. <laughs> All right, you guys, Tales from the Hoodie. Harvard and the Educational Uncle Greg out. Next video.